Hello, everyone. This is Eden from Chinese Academy of Sciences. I now talk about my paper titled the Individual Simulations. Uh, this is the outline of this talk. I first will give you a brief introduction to the problem. And uh, I would like to start with a formal statement of a typical theorem, which usually states that if uh, assumption x holds, then the construction y is scalar. We often prove such a theorem by a universal reduction, where we simply construct a reduction R such that for any adversary A that breaks the Y, the reduction R can break the underlying assumption X. However, for most security definitions, it switches the quantifiers and requires only existential existential proof. That is, we just need to show that for every adversary A, there exists a, exists a reduction R. And then we also note that there may be a huge gap between these two reduction methods. In the universal reduction, the R has only access to the code of the adversary A. But in an individual reduction, the R may, be, may depend on any properties of the functionality of A. In this paper, we will focus on simulation-based security. And uh, up to date, almost all simulation strategies are universal. This includes the uh, black box simulation techniques and the box, non black box simulation techniques. And uh, it seems to us that it's individual uh, simulation uh, seems to be much powerful. And this is uh, implicitly mentioned in several works, such as Chang Lei Pass in TCC 15, then in your crypto uh, 17. In this paper, we mainly develop such a simple individual simulation technique and then construct the two protocols. Yeah. That breaks the lone black box barriers for the first time on the standard assumption. And uh, these protocols enjoy a somewhat weak security, we call TFC security, where the simulator depends on the size of the distinguish and then the error property, uh, error probability we tolerate. And we also simplify the constructions and uh, security proofs so the existing low round weak zero protocol in the play model. Now we talk about our simulation technique. Uh, for now, we just assume we already have a two round protocol AB with uh, two good properties. This Construction is similar to recent breakthroughs in weak zero protocol and the constructions that uh, use condition condition disclosure schemes. In this protocol, the party B simply samples an MP instance Y to A, then A sent back MSCM. We assume the protocol enjoys two properties. The first is low and witness to Y enable us to give a successful simulation. The second is distinguishing an honest MSCM from a dummy message is equivalent to extracting a witness Y. Now concede in arbitrary adversary B. 
and uh, our question is how to simulate the honest party A. Here we just want a long defined simulate rather than distinguish dependent one. Um, <coughs> we note that there are two cases in which the simulator will win. The first is the simulator S succeeds to extract a witness to Y. Second one is if the simulator fails, then we need to make sure that no other efficient algorithms can succeed. And of course, the black box extractor would fail in this setting because we cannot uh, uh, extract the, the witness by rewinding the adversary B. So what about the individual extractor? We call that we man we just mentioned such an extract such an extractor knows the randomness of the B and can depend on any properties of the functionality of B. Uh, however, these two cases in which the simulator will win indicates that uh, we may need an optimal individual extractor that outperforms all other efficient algorithms. The, pro the problem with this approach is that uh, it seems hard to bond the size of the extractor and uh, it may run in super polynomial time. For this reason, we resort to the weaker simulate, simulatability called T epsilon simulatability. Now we just need a T epsilon optimal extractor that outperforms all sets of size T except for for probability epsilon. Fortunately, we are able to show the existence of such an optimal extractor. The procedure for constructing such an extractor is as follows. First, we can pick an arbitrary algorithm E, and then for I from one to one over epsilon, we ask a question at each step i. Does it does there exist a sex C of size t such that the probability that the current extractor fails to extract a witness, but the sex C wins is greater than epsilon? And if the answer is yes, then we now have a new extractor by simply combining these two sets, uh, which outputs a valid witness if one of these two sets output a valid witness. Uh, compared to the extractor we have at the beginning of this step, the success probability of the new extractor increases by at least epsilon. Thus, if for any step i the answer is yes, then at the end of this procedure we will have, a, have an extractor with a success probability 1, which is of course optimal. And otherwise, if for some step i the answer to this question is no, then we also have an T epsilon optimal extractor. Uh, Note that the final extractor retained by this procedure uh, is of size at most uh, T over epsilon. So we prove that for any MP instance sampling algorithm B, we have an T epsilon. Uh, optimal extractor E. And we now give two examples to explain 
how the extract E depends on the functionality of B. We can see that Y is an image of one-way permutation F. And in the first example, the algorithm B chooses a chooses an R from the domain of F and then compute F R. And then for this algorithm we have the have an optimal extract E that takes R and Y as input and just outputs R. As a second example, uh, in the second example, the algorithm B simply sample, simply samples an R from the range of F and then outputs R. And uh, for this algorithm B, an arbitrary algorithm can also be optimal. This is because of, uh, this is because the F is one way and uh, low algorithm can compute a random compute a pre-image of a random Y. And then uh, for our for the purpose of our applications We need to consider T instance sampling algorithm B that output T instance simultaneously. Uh, for such a sampling algorithm B, we want a robust T epsilon optimal extractor that outperforms any sex C of size T except for the for probability epsilon in each coordinate. Here we also require this to hold even the second C takes the output of the extractor as the input. And then for such an T instance something algorithm B, we also have an T epsilon robust. Uh, robust T epsilon optimal extractor of, si of polynomial size, uh, which is optimal in every coordinate high. Uh, here, look that we allow the sex C to take the to take the output of the extractor as input, and. Uh, for this change, we need to make we need to make some careful modifications in the previous procedure for constructing an optimal extractor. And now, if the protocol A B satisfies these two properties, properties, then with the T epsilon optimal extractor E, we can achieve T epsilon simulatability for A. Here, the simulate simply applies the extractor and tries to extract the witness to Y. And if the extractor um, succeeds, then we are done. And uh, if the extractor fails, then the simulate can send back a dummy message, which is uh, indistinguishable from the real world. This is because of the second property of the protocol AB. We now attend to our constructions. A key ingredient for our constructions with this two properties is a variant of Robin's encryption scheme, which is basically a directly even approach to encryption. The public key is a blum int to n, and the secret key is a prime factor of n. This defines the trapdoor one-way permutation f, which maps s to, maps a quadratic residue s to s squared modulo n. To encrypt a bit n, one chooses 
an R and compute the FR is the first part of the ciphertext. Second part of the ciphertext is the hard core of R, XOR, the bit M. And implied by the work Comper and War, we have that for any integer N, distinguish, distinguishing ciphertext is, is equivalent to extracting a prime factor of N. And um, we will use this property to establish the second property of protocol AB. And here the, we just uh, let the party B send the public key N to A and then and uh, then the party A sends back a ciphertext under the public key N. With these ideas, we now give two constructions. The first is the two round SOS SQL commitment scheme. We use two primitives uh, encryption scheme just mentioned and a trapdoor commitment schemes defined over the public key N. And the trapdoor is the secret key P. That means if one knows the secret key P, then it can open a given commitment to any value at its wish at its wish. In the committing phase, the receiver sending blame integer n to the sender. Then the sender computes a commitment to B and uh, encrypts this commitment commitment C and send it sends it back to the receiver and and in the opening phase to send computes openings and sends b and then decommitment to the receiver and then the receiver first decrypts the, the ciphertext he received in the committing phase and then check that B and the commitment is a valid opening for C. The binding property follows from the fact that two valid openings need to factor in. And the, the T epsilon SOA security follows from the following two observations. We first observe that this scheme is almost equivocal in the standalone settings. Here we think about uh, we are given a commitment. And then we can apply to the TMS the optimal extractor and try to extract a factor when if the succeed if the extractor succeeds, then we can use the trap door to open the given commitment to any value. And if the extractor fails, uh, if the extractor fails, then we can also open it to any value B. This is because the failure of the optimal extractor implies that no other sex can extract the secret key or the prime factor of one which in turn implies that no other sex of size t can decrypt the ciphertext received in the committing phase. And then, then in this setting, we can pretend that an arbitrary b and then the commitment is, uh, is a valid opening for some commitment c, which is which may not be related to the plain text encrypted in the ciphertext. 
uh, sent by the sent by the send in the committing phase. Now we take a close look at the SOA attack in which the adversary receiver or star is allowed to initiate T sessions for some polynomial T and it sumps an int T integers of 1, 2, and T. And then the send sends back T commitments. After that, the receiver or star asks the send to open a subset of these commitments. And now we can apply <coughs> the robust T epsilon optimal extractor to such a receiver or star. And combining the observations, the first observations, so we will have an T epsilon simulate for the attacker on the parallel repetition. We now attend to the three round concurrent zero-launch in the BPK model. And uh, here we use the same encryption scheme and uh, three round schema protocol. We denote the three messages exchanged in a session by A, E, and Z. And in the key generation phase, we have to verify, write a pair of public key on the public file F. And in the proof phase, P and V execute the three round sigma protocol to prove that X is in L or I know uh, a secret key of N0 or N1. To achieve the concurrent zero energy, we have we modify this protocol slightly and then have the pool encrypt the last message twice on the each public key. At last, the verify decrypts these cipher taxes and then check see if these two plain taxes are equal and uh, AEZ is accepting. The concurrent soundness is similar to the soundness proof of the classical Fike Shamir protocol in the plain model, which essentially says that breaking concurrent soundness needs to factor in, in integer n. And using this reasoning similar to the SOS cure commitment scheme, we can also construct a T epsilon uh, simulator for an adversary verifier V. The simulator first applies the T robust T epsilon optimal extractor to the key generation phase of the verify and tries to extract a prime factor for each pair of public key. Now, if the extractor succeeds, then we are done. And uh, if this extractor fails for some pair of public key, then the simulate can encrypt all zeros in the last step on this, uh, of the session on this public key. Which is uh, indistinguishable from the uh, real world execution. Uh, we can also apply these ideas tactics to construct a two round T epsilon simulator zoology in the play model. And uh, these techniques can also be used to simplify the security proofs of the existing. Weak zero logic in the play model. Here, in summary, we developed a very simple 
simulation technique and construct uh, two simple protocols that breaks the loan black box barriers for the first time. And uh, we also simplify the construction of the security proofs of the existing VX2 launch in the play model. Thank you.